Okay, so let's go ahead and put your math knowledge and skills to work to figure out this nice, interesting math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go and read the problem here. It is the following. How many times can a 50-foot rope with a 1 8 inch diameter go around a 3-foot pulley? So feel free to use a calculator to help you out here, but if you have the answer to this question, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second, and then of course I'll walk through the solution to this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades, and it really is my true passion to try to make learning mathematics as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if you like this video, if you just enjoy this content, make sure to hit that like button and that subscribe button as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so the answer to this question is just going to be a general uh, approximation. Okay, now we're not gonna get so, so general, but let me go ahead and show you the actual answer. And you'll see what I'm talking about as we um, actually uh, solve this problem, but if you have around five times, okay, matter of fact, let's just, this is the answer, but let me go back and review the question. We have this rope, right, one eighth inch diameter. How many times can it go around this three foot pulley? And just in case for those of you that don't know, a pulley is one of these little gizmos like this, and of course it pulls up, well, that's just too much right here. It pulls up a line, it turns, right, and it's going to turn in this rope like that. So hopefully you have a basic concept what a pulley is and uh, anyways the answer here it's going to go around that pulley around 5.3 times but if you said around five times I would accept that answer because uh, this is an approximation but it's a decent approximation and you'll see what I'm talking about in just one second but if you got this right that is fantastic matter of fact we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in a plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of working with circumference, okay? And that's really the topic of this video is we're talking about circles, right? And because a pulley is in the shape of a circle, so we need to know a thing or two about circles. And the thing we need to understand is the distance around a circle, which is called the circumference. So, um, Again, you know, if you used a calculator, that's perfectly fine. If you got something uh, in this range, I'm going to assume that you did this right. But uh, let's go ahead and get started here. And the first thing we need to do is uh, think about the problem. Okay, now how do we think about the problem? Well, you think about the problem by reading it at least three times. So that's kind of my general rule of thumb. When you read a problem, uh, oftentimes we, you know, assume that we understand the problem. We're like, okay, I understand what's going on. Well, you know, Get in the habit of kind of putting uh, a pause on your, you know, kind of excitement to start figuring the problem out. Read it again. Think about it because when you read a problem more than a few times, you often, uh, uh, oftentimes what comes, what happens is you come up with different ways you can solve the problem because initially you might say, oh, I know exactly what to do. But after more consideration, you might be like, well, maybe I don't need to do that. I can do this. So read the problem at least three times and make sure you understand the question. Now, in mathematics, and Ken, I'm especially speaking to those of you that might be students out there, a problem like this, you know, this could be something that you might find in like a basic uh, algebra course, basic geometry course. You need to kind of simplify the problem. Okay, don't look too much into it. And you might be saying to yourself, well, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, if we're going to do this problem right, let's do it right. Let's consider all the factors here. Uh, but, you know, if we really work technically, I suppose we were uh, engineers, you know, then we would have to consider the diameter of this rope. Okay, this would be, and then of course, here's a pulley and we're looking at it sideways, right? It's turning on some sort of axle, so the rope might be coming in this way. And we're like, well, the diameter and the rope might be, you know, going on top of one another. And these are all actual real life considerations, okay? But this is not an engineering problem. Uh, so, you know, we're trying to have mm, a little bit of math fun here. So simplify the problem, okay? So simplify the problem. And uh, for those of you that are math students, okay, if you're like unsure about how to interpret the problem, raise your hand and ask your teacher, like, hey, look, uh, you know, uh, you know, ask them for hints. You know, they might say no. Well, I can't tell you that. But anytime you're in a doubt, excuse me, anytime you have doubt 
about a question, try to see if you can get clarification on it. All right, so the main point here is let's simplify the problem. Okay, so once we have a simplistic view of what's going on, what we want to do is model the problem, and we probably want to come up with some sort of sketch of what's going on so we can visualize the problem. And let me go ahead and show you my sketch. So here it is. So we have a three foot wide pulley. Okay, obviously this thing is gonna turn like some sort of winch or whatnot. Uh, so it's going to maybe turn this way and it's gonna bring in this 50 foot of rope. And the question is how many times, uh, well, let's actually go back to the question. So uh, the question is how many times can a 50 foot rope with a uh, 1 8 inch diameter go around a three foot pulley? So in other words, uh, how many times will this pulley go around uh, before it brings in all the rope? Okay, so that is how we want to interpret the question. And obviously, we're dealing with a circle here. So it's going to be important for us to know a thing or two about circles. And let's go ahead and talk about what we do need to know about circles. And the main uh, point here, okay, in this uh, question is how much will the rope go around this circle. Okay, now of course it's going to make multiple turns, or at least, you know, we kind of should assume that. But the first question is uh, well, it should be how much would the rope go around one time? Okay, so how much rope would go around one lap around the circle just once? Okay, so in other words, if we just turn the pulley 360 degrees, did a full revolution, how much rope could we uh, bring in? Now, once we understand that, then, you know, it's going to be pretty straightforward on how many turns we need. Uh, to do in order to bring in all 50 uh, feet of that rope, okay? So the question here is how much uh, rope uh, can go around one time? Really what we're asking is what is the distance around the circle one time? Okay, what is that distance? Well, as I alluded to in the beginning of this video, that is called the circumference. And of course, uh, there is a formula for that. And we're going to get to that right now. But before I get to that, I'm going to get to this, and that is my request uh, for you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I wouldn't ask if it wasn't that important, not just for me personally, uh, so that's definitely appreciated, but it's a way for me to help other people that are interested in math or need help in mathematics. So by you subscribing, it really does uh, push out that algorithm uh, to other people that are looking around, and my biggest passion is to prevent people from giving up on mathematics. Okay, that's what really drives me to do these videos because too many people, matter of fact, the vast majority of people who think they are bad in math or they don't like math, uh, particularly people who don't like math, uh, many of those people think they're bad at math. That's why they don't like math. And guess what? All of that is false. Something happened somewhere along the line in their math education. Uh, some teacher told them they were bad or they just had a bad experience. But listen, if you have great uh, instruction, clear and understandable math instruction, uh, encouragement, and you're willing to do the work, you could be extremely successful in math. So anyways, thanks for listening to my little pitch. And if you're going to subscribe, make sure to hit that notification bell so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so let's get back uh, to the problem. And the first thing we want to understand is what is the distance around a circle? Okay, well, the distance around a circle has a fancy name and that is called the circumference. Okay, so the circumference of the circle is kind of like the perimeter of a circle, but we don't use that word perimeter. So let's say this little rectangle right here, if I wanted to know the distance around this rectangle, that would be called, that, that's called the perimeter. Okay, that's a concept that just, you know, what's the total distance around something. And the perimeter is also used in figures like, let's say, triangles, all sorts of different things. So if I wanted to know the distance around this thing, for example, that's the perimeter. But when we're talking about circles, the distance around a circle is specifically called the circumference. And we need to understand uh, a formula for the circumference. And let's go ahead and take a look at that uh, formula right now. Okay, so there's basically two versions of this formula, but uh, the easiest version is this. The circumference of a circle is equal to the diameter, okay, which is effectively the width of the circle times pi. Okay, so pi is probably one of the or the most famous uh, number in all of mathematics. It's approximately 3.14. That's an extremely rough um, 
approximation because pi is a decimal that goes on and on and on. Matter of fact, it goes all the way out to infinity, and both you and I do not have enough time to write out all the decimals of pi. But uh, the more uh, decimals we do use of pi, the more accurate our answer will be. So I'm going to tell you right now, you never want to uh, really use anything less than 3.14. So I'm going to use 3.14 as my approximation for pi, but that is a you know, very rough uh, approximation. But just to keep the calculations kind of simple here. Now, uh, just one thing about pi, the reason why it doesn't, we can't write all the um, decimals out is because pi is what we call an irrational number. Okay, an irrational number. In other words, it's not rational. Now, what does that uh, mean? Well, effectively, it means that the digits of pi do not repeat. In other words, it's not like, uh, uh, let's say, like a number like 7.282828. The two eights keep repeating over and over and over. So that's uh, that's what we call repeating decimal, and these kind of decimals uh, can be expressed as fractions. So pi is a non-repeating, so we just don't know the next digit of pi, so it's, it's unpredictable. So it's non-repeating and non-terminating, so therefore it goes out to infinity. So forget about it. we're not going to get all the digits, but you might be um, uh, you know, uh, surprised to know that there are people uh, that memorize like a lot of digits of pi. Matter of fact, on uh, March 11th, okay, 311, in the math community, we celebrate this lovely number, uh, 3.14, March, uh, I'm sorry, March, I said March 11th, March 14th, <laughs> excuse me, March 14th is Pi Day, and there's all kinds of contests. Anyways, uh, I don't want to digress too much further about Pi, but one fast thing about Pi, where, is it, where does this number come from, 3.14? Well, I'll tell you, okay, because this is important and we can kind of understand it right here, is that pi, okay, if I take this uh, equation, okay, this formula, the circumference is equal to uh, di the diameter times pi, and I divide both sides by the diameter, well, the circumference divided by the diameter is equal to pi. So effectively, if you take any circle, okay, and you measure the distance around that circle, and you divide it by its width, you'll always come up with this lovely number, uh, pi, 3.14, etc., etc. Okay, so just a quick review of pi, and hopefully you'll never forget what this is about. And on March 14th of every year, you'll celebrate. But we do have another um, uh, a formula for pi, and this is pretty common as well. And that is a circumference is equal, I'm sorry, not for pi, for the circumference. And the circumference is equal to 2 pi r, okay? And r is the radius of a circle. So the radius of a circle is just uh, emanates out from the center, and it's one half the diameter. So if we just take the radius multiplied by 2, we get the diameter. Okay, so depending on whether you have the radius or the diameter, uh, choose whatever um, formula that you want to work with. And here we know that the width of this pulley uh, is 3 feet, and the width implies the diameter. Okay, so now we have everything we need to calculate the circumference. So here's our pulley. It is 3 uh, feet wide. So we're simply going to plug in 3 for the diameter, and again, we're going to use a very, very basic rough approximation for pi, which is 3.14. Now, if you want more decimals of pi, you could bring those up in your calculator. Just look it up. But if you want a uh, more accurate uh, answer, okay, just what you do is you use more digits of pi. Now, for those of you that are math students, if the question is, uh, find the exact circumference. If the word exact is used, okay, exact, what is the exact answer? Well, then you always just leave pi alone. In other words, like 7 pi uh, would represent the exact precise answer because pi right here, you know, uh, contains all those infinite digits. So just leave your answer just like that. And that is perfectly acceptable in mathematics. But again, that's only when the question says, give me the exact answer, all right? But if they're looking for an approximation, well, then use a decimal approximation for pi. Again, the minimum would be 3.14. Okay, so here we have our diameter 3, or 3 feet, times 3.14. So the circumference is going to be approximately, very roughly, 9.42 feet. So remember, our unit of measure here is feet, so our circumference will be in feet. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, now we know the distance that uh, it takes um, to travel one time around this pulley, 9.42 uh, feet approximately. So if we got 50 uh, foot of rope, uh, this is pretty straightforward stuff, right? So once around is approximately 
two. So all we need to do is take our how much rope we have. We have 50 feet divided by 9.42 feet, which is, of course, one lap around uh, the uh, pulley. And we're going to come up with 5.3 times or a little bit over five. Now, if you think about it, we just don't know how this pulley, let me see if I can kind of draw this in 3D. So we don't know if our pulley is maybe like this. Well, let me draw this a little bit better. If it's kind of like a wide, right? And the uh, rope is one eighth inch. So that's not too um, large of a diameter, right? So maybe the, the rope is kind of coming in like so. Now, if we had a skinnier pulley, some of you might think, well, you know what? If we did have a small pulley like this, what would happen? Well, some of the, you know, the rope would kind of get, you know, on top of it, you know, itself, if you will, expanding the diameter. So either way, even if you had that situation, it's probably going to be around five times, all right? So that's why in the beginning of this video, you know, you didn't have to give me the super exact precise answer. There's other variables, obviously, that could affect the um, uh, real life calculations if we were like engineers trying to figure this out. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to know more about uh, geometry, basic geometry, or just learn full-on geometry, I'm going to leave um, links to my main math courses in the description of this video to include my full geometry course. That's a you know very big, heavy-duty uh, course, kind of like the high school level. Uh, but you don't need to uh, take that course if you just want to learn some basic geometry. I teach that in my pre-algebra course. Uh, there's a few chapters on you know, basic uh, area, surface area, volume, perimeter, things like that. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.